Let's look at an example of a chi-squared goodness of fit test. According to the Consumer Affairs Department at Mars Company, the company produces the M&M peanut chocolate candies in the following proportions. 20% each of brown, yellow, red, and blue, and 10% each of green and orange. We want to know whether what the company claims is true or not. To do this, several bags of M&M peanut chocolate candies are purchased. After counting all the candies, the following numbers of each color of M&Ms was found. The question is, do these data give you reason to doubt the company's claim? To answer that question, we can do a chi-squared goodness of fit test. The first thing we need to do the test is our null and our alternative hypotheses. In this problem, our null hypothesis is that the proportion of brown M&Ms equals the proportion of yellow equals the proportion of red equals the proportion of blue, or 20%, and that the proportion of green equals the proportion of orange equals 10%. It's what the company claims to be true. Our alternative hypothesis is that at least one of these proportions differs. To continue with the test, we need a test statistic. We will use a chi-squared test statistic, and the form of that test statistic is the sum over all of our categories of the observed minus the expected frequencies quantity squared over the expected frequencies. As long as certain conditions are met, and those conditions are that in the expected cell frequencies, that we have at least one in each expected cell frequency, and that no more than 20% are less than five. If those conditions are met, which we'll check shortly, then the test statistic has a chi-squared distribution with five degrees of freedom. Where does five come from? Five is n minus one, where n is the number of categories in our hypothesized distribution. So now we need to look for our observed observations and our expected observations. Here, what we sampled is our observed. We observed 76 brown, 65 yellow, and so forth. In this column, we are going to put what we expected to see. This expected frequency comes from what we would expect to see if the null hypothesis is true. We sampled a total of 350 M&Ms. So, if the null hypothesis is true, how many brown M&Ms would we expect to see? We would expect to see 20% of the 350, which is 70. We would expect 70 brown M&Ms. Because the claimed hypothesized distribution for yellow, red, and blue is all the same, and we would also expect to see 70 yellow, 70 red, and 70 blue. How many green and orange M&Ms would we expect to see? If the null hypothesis is true, we would expect to see 10% of our sample, or 10% of 350, which is 35. We would expect 35 green, and we would also expect 35 orange. Will our chi-squared test statistic have a chi-squared distribution? The answer is yes, because we see that all expected cell frequencies are greater than five. So the conditions are met to say that the test statistic has a chi-squared distribution. Now we need to calculate the observed minus expected quantity squared over expected values for each of these six cells. The first one is given by 76 minus 70 quantity squared over 70. What does that equal? It equals 0 0.514. Continuing this for the remaining five cells, we find that the expected minus, observed minus expected squared over expected is 0.357 for the yellow M&Ms. 65 minus 70 is five, square it, you get 25, divided by 70 is 0.357. We see a zero value here. Why is that? Our observe is 70, our expected is 70. When we subtra subtract those two, we get zero. We square it, we get zero. And we divide, we still get zero.
To get our test statistic, we need to sum these six numbers, and that will be our chi-squared test statistic. We do that, and we find that 7.8 is the value of our test statistic. Now we are ready to calculate the p-value for this test. The p-value for the test is the probability that a chi-squared distribution with five degrees of freedom is greater than our test statistic. Remember, our test statistic has this distribution, chi-squared with five degrees of freedom. So we're looking for the probability that a chi-squared random variable with five degrees of freedom is greater than 7.8. To answer and find this probability, we need to look at a chi-squared table. Let's do that now. The values in a chi-squared table are, is the area to the right, the area under the curve to the right of your, your value x squared. We are looking at a chi-squared distribution with five degrees of freedom. Our test statistic is 7.8. Going across the row, we see that 7.8 lies between 6.6 .6 and 9.2. We know that the area to the right of that is 0.1, is between 0.1 and 0.25. So our p-value is between 0.1 and 0.25. So we see that our p-value, again, is between 0.1 and 0.25, and we are ready to make our conclusion uh, about the test. Our conclusion is, because the p-value of the chi-squared goodness of fit test is greater than 0.10, there is no reason to doubt the company's claim about the color distribution of its M&Ms. Before we leave this problem, let's show you how to calculate the p-value using the calculator as opposed to a chi-squared table. Again, the p-value is the probability that a chi-squared distribution with five degrees of freedom is greater than 7.8. We can use the chi-squared CDF function on the TI calculator to calculate this probability. The parameters you need to enter are the lower bound and upper bound, the region where you're finding the area under the curve, followed by the degrees of freedom for the particular chi-squared distribution. So in our problem, we would have chi-squared CDF, 7.8 to 1,000. We want the area above 7.8 for a 5 degree of freedom chi-squared distribution. So let's do that on the calculator. If we go to second VARS, down to number 7, we have chi-squared CDF, 7.8 comma, 1,000, comma, 5 degrees of freedom, and hit enter. And we find that our p-value is 0.17. Again, we knew from the table that the p-value had to be, be between 0.1 and 0.25. Using the calculator, we find that it's 0.17. Again, what does the p-value mean? The p-value is the probability that we would have observed our sample of M&Ms that we got or something more extreme if the null hypothesis is true. 17% of the time, we will see the distribution of colors that we got in our sample or something more extreme. That's fairly likely, so this gives us no reason to doubt the company's claim about the color distribution of their peanut M&M candies.